Hello, I'm Wes Dyer. This is Bart Desmet, and we're here at the, with the second episode about uh, Rx. And today we'll be talking about how observables can be used to represent asynchronous data streams. In particular, we're going to talk about how they're like events, but actually much better. So previously we said uh, that Rx is three things, observables, link, and schedulers. Today we'll be focusing on the first aspect, the observable part, and how they represent asynchronous data streams. So for example, we're all familiar with uh, .NET events. And you um, know there's three basic operations you can do with .NET events. First, you can declare a .NET event. And you can do that by saying this event keyword and then giving it a delegate type and then the name of the event. Second, you can publish data to the event by invoking the event. And the third thing is you can subscribe to the event by adding a handler. In this case, we add this lambda, right? So the three bas basic operations with events are declare an event, publish, and subscribe. We're all very familiar with these things. But in a similar way, we can do uh, that kind of thing with Rx as well and have asynchronous data streams. We can declare, publish, and subscribe. So let's look at that. So in particular, we can declare, one way we can declare an event stream is by having a subject here. We have i subject with, which has ints, which basically means it's the stream of ints, okay? So I say i subject of int s is this new subject thing. And that thing is now a source for creating events. The second thing is I can publish events inside that stream. And the way I do it is by saying on next inside of s. So before I said, I evoked you know, the event E with 42, but now I'm just saying, I want the next value to pump, be pumped out of S with 42. It's the same kind of thing. And last, I can subscribe to the event stream. In this case, I say subscribe and say plus equals, and I pass a handler that's actually the exact identical handle, handler to the previous slide. All right, so now let's contrast these two examples. So here we have an event E, and we have a subject S on the right-hand side, and we'll put a breakpoint here and kind of step through um, and, uh, each of these examples. So if we start off with the program, we create a program. In each case, now we're going to add a handler. On the left, we have the event. We do the plus equals. On the right, we do subscribe. And on uh, this slide, on this um, step now, what we do is we invoke the event handler or the, the subscribe, well, the subject with on next. And it pumps out the value, the next value, in this case, one. And it's going to jump to the handler, which will hand, handle that, that value of, of one. And it goes back to here and pumps out the next value, value and so on. And so actually it has an exactly identical kind of behavior to what you're used to. So you're used to declaring, publishing, subscribing, and you can do the same things with Rx. But it's better than events. So it's like events, but better. And here's, here's one of the ways it's better. So subjects, the way I showed you before, and, uh, but actually there's two different things there, right? There's publishing and subscribing. And so now we can actually separate those interfaces. So before we had this interface here that did both, but now uh, the subject is actually implementing two interfaces. One is the publishing interface, which allows you to send messages, and one's the subscribing interface, which allows you to subscribe. And so these two interfaces are actually separate, and you can have things in Rx that just are publishers, or just can subscribe, and not do both, and where you cannot do that with, um, with .NET events. Another thing is that uh, in Rx, observables are actually first class. And what first class really means is just that we can pass them to functions, return them back, store them in values, and so on. So for example, if I have a text change stream, I can actually store that stream of, of strings to a variable. Or I can pass in like, you know, an input sequence of stream here, and I can pass it to this function. Or I can return back the results of querying the server in an observable stream of ints. And this, was, this is what it means to be first class. Another thing is that it has punctuation. Unlike events, where events, you just get all the sequence of events, you, don't, uh, you can never say, like, this, the event stream is now done. And so what um, Rx allows you to do is say next for the values, but then say completed. In other words, there's no more events. And also you can say that there's abnormal termination with some, with some error code here, which is the exception. The last thing is that Rx actually provides a grammar and some contract around what the interface allows you to, to expect. So in particular, the, the sequence of messages you, you expect to see are some number of on next messages, optionally followed by an on completed or on error message. Another thing is that these messages never overlap in time with respect to a single observable. So if you subscribe to a single one with an observer, he'll never call on next. You'll never call on next and you'll be processing that and then he'll call on next again while you're still processing it. He'll wait till you've completed the first um, message before he sends you the next one. So for example, here's a conforming observable. It sends zero, one, two, and then it goes on forever. It's actually an infinite stream. This is a conforming one. Similarly, this is also conforming, but this one actually terminates with a completed message. So this has on next zero, on next one, on next two, and then an error. And that's also good. But here's an example of one that's bad in two ways. 
And the first is that it sends two on next messages that overlap in time. The second is that it actually sends a message after the completed message, which is also not acceptable. And so let's take a, a, a deeper look at what uh, we can do with observables and how they're like events with Bart here. Okay. So let's take a look at, you know, how we create a classic application using .NET events and how we actually do the same using Rx subjects. So let's create a new console application and just new up some event in there. So let's actually get started by creating this and adding a reference to system.reactive, which we've already used in the previous, uh, previous episode. So I can just include it from the recent dialogue over here. So now that I'm all set up here for um, writing some code, let's start by declaring simply an event here. So let's say that in a classic world, we want to do like a static action of int that receives some value, like, you know, the number of times something has changed or whatever. And let's actually call this event uh, changed. Of course, I will have to declare it as an event, but as you can see, events in .NET are nothing more than just delegates on, on steroids. So now that I have this, um, we can do two things with that. We can actually subscribe to the event. So I can say changed plus equals x goes to, and then write some event handler. So I can say console write line x, or I could also do, you know, change plus equals, and then just create an event handler that lives somewhere else, like in a separate method, of course, which is exactly the same thing. So now that I have, you know, an event handler sitting here, I can start erasing the event. And I'd simply do that by calling to the event. In reality, you would actually have a null check on top of that and store, you know, the event object in a separate object to make sure that nobody is unsubscribing before you can actually raise the event. But so let's ignore that and just, you know, pump out 42 here. So as I execute this piece of code, you actually see 42 being printed on the console. What happened here is that my control flow in the program really went as follows. We actually did the plus equals. We are not blocking here to wait for events to come in. We basically subscribe an event handler, and then when the event handler actually triggers, it basically invokes the code that sits in, in the event handler here. So that's basically what's going on in terms of the control flow. So now I can do exactly the same using um, iObservable and um, iSubject. So basically, an iObservable would be the receiving end of the spectrum here. So an iObservable equivalent would be this thing, where you do a subscribe. And the iObserver part where you actually pump messages out would be the equivalent to this. So let's actually take a look at how we can do that. So let's say that I have a static subject of int. Subjects live in a separate namespace called system reactive subject. So let's just include that. And let me actually call that, you know, changed to. So I have this thing here. Let's actually create a new instance of that. And now see how we can actually uh, change our code to use a subject instead. So instead of doing plus equals, instead of doing that, I'm going to use subscribe. And so if you take a look at subscribe, there is a number of overloads that you can use. Uh, the master overload is actually the one that takes in an I observer, which is the way to receive data. It's a callback interface that has on next, on error, and on completed. But we also have overloads here that come in uh, into extension here or into existence by, by means of extension methods from the system namespace. You can actually also use the overload that simply takes in an action of on next, which is exactly what we've been doing for the um, .NET event. So that's the equivalent to um, plus equals with .NET events. Then in order to raise the event, instead of calling, you know, to the object, which you can't do because it's not a delegate type, you would do on next instead. So you can say change to dot on next 42, which means invoke the on next handler on anyone who subscribed to this particular event. And so as I execute this, we see exactly the same uh, control flow sequence here. We see that subscribe is asynchronous. You basically subscribe and then you move on with the rest of your program. And then at the point that you do an on next, you see that the event handler actually will get invoked and we'll actually have console write line sitting on the screen here. So you see that now coming out of the application. Now, because we've done this, just one thing uh, to notice here is that if we include, and we'll talk much more about that in the, uh, in the next episode, if I include system reactive link, because a subject is actually an iObservable, we can start writing queries over that, which is already strictly more powerful than .NET events. So if you look at change to dot, you see a whole set of operators that you can apply to this event source to do all sorts of event processing on top of it. We should maybe also show unsubscribing real briefly too. Exactly. So unsubscribing is also quite different between uh, .NET events and reactive because, well, there is something 
a little fishy with .NET events with regards to unsubscribing. If you want to unsubscribe from a .NET event, really what you're doing there is you basically have to memorize the thing that you gave to the plus equals here. So like here, I'm subscribing to the .NET event by giving it this particular delegate. However, how do you unsubscribe from it? Well, you will have to store this part that you have sitting here in some separate delegates, like let me call this thing A. Oops, actually, excuse me. Let's actually undo this and actually cut it out. So in order to unsubscribe, you need to memorize the thing that you actually gave to the plus equals. So something like this. So you can do change plus equals A, then you can invoke the event like this. And then in order to unsubscribe, what you have to do is you have to do changed minus equals A. You can't just copy in that same delegate type or that same delegate piece of code because, well, the compiler will generate two of those and they will not have the same identity. So you can't actually unsubscribe by just copying the same, same piece of code here. You need to memorize that action somewhere. Now, if our exits kind of different, because what you do there is you basically say change to dot subscribe. And as you will see in just a second here, um, let me actually inline this whole thing again. The way to unsubscribe is not by memorizing the action. Actually, the keys on Wes's keyboard are slightly different from mine, so apologizes for that. So I can do this, but as you can see on change two, if you so sort of go for a hunt for unsubscribe, you won't find that. There's no way to unsubscribe apparently by calling an unsubscribe method, which would imply that you would have to memorize the action. Instead, what you get is when you subscribe, the return type is a disposable. And so when you actually assign that disposable over here, you can call d.dispose at the point you want to unsubscribe from the event source. Let's actually do that over here. dispose means basically eliminate that particular subscription that we have sitting there on our event source. And so just to prove the point that this is actually working, let's do change to on next 42 and let's do changed 43 over here. And you will see that the second one shouldn't come out because we've already unsubscribed from the event source. That's right. All right, so we promised you that we'd end with a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so indeed we do have a challenge uh, with this uh, episode. And that is, we've talked about all the ways that observables are better than events. But one way we haven't talked about them, only briefly kind of uh, Bart's mentioned it, is that observables are more compositional than events. And the challenge is essentially to prove that fact. So if you open up challenge one, the introduction to Rx challenge, then you, what you'll find is there's a little program here that has some output and, and it basically has the, let me bump up the font here. It has things for events and it has um, some code, the same code for observables. And basically what you, what you want to, you to do is that in the event-based one, for example, you'll see that there's a, a text changed event what we want you to do is implement the event for length changed. And the text change was a field like event. This is a virtual event. We want you to implement this using only the add and remove text here and not adding any more stuff on the outside except for maybe a field. That's a So hint. length change needs to basically listen to on text change? Yes. And you know, whenever the length of the text is actually changing, you need to pump out the value saying what the new length is. That's exactly right. And observable is the exact same thing. We have a text changed um, asynchronous data stream, which is of strings. And now we have a length changed one and, there's, and you can implement this one as well. The challenge is to implement these. And once you've done that, you will see for yourself why observables are compositional and events are not. So thanks, and we'll see you next time.